So what we have here is a collection of six different CubeSats. Uh, a couple of them are international, um, and I just kind of walk through them a little bit. So this one here is um, the based off of the AMSAT uh, CubeSat simulator. If you're not familiar with AMSAT, that's the radio uh, uh, amateur radio satellite uh, company or organization here in the United States. They're actually international, um, but we have a U.S. version here. Um, this was the original one that got me started last year. And uh, I love the CubeSat uh, sim. It's again, you can you can actually see in, inside of it. We've got a Raspberry Pi Zero here. We've got four um, INA 219s on this side. Voltage current monitors for the the solar cells. There's also four on the top side as well. Uh, the problem is with this particular design, as it was done by AMSAT, is it's a Sputnik. Uh, it only transmits data. Doesn't do anything um, else. And yeah, so it's, it's really cool. It does, I mean, they're geared towards radio. So there's like five different radio modes, uh, including like CW and stuff um, that mm -hmm. this will broadcast, which is really cool. But yeah. uh, from the hacker side of stuff, um, this is not very appealing. I wanted something that I could actually attack. Mm -hmm. um, so we took and I, I modified this, and this is where I got started with the actual uh, LoRa. You can actually see it right in here. It's uh, got some messy wires and stuff, but this is just a uh, RFM95 LoRa module, which turned out to be the perfect um, radio module for this type of application because it's unreliable. Um, you have limited uh, FIFO buffers. In this case, it's 255 bytes, but realistically, you can't send anything over about 240 bytes because of the, the headers and stuff like that. It's also long range, um, which is really cool. I don't even have to be in the same room to operate this. Mm -hmm. And it's 915 megahertz um, frequency center, which was also another requirement for me was that it could not be in 2.4 because mm -hmm. uh, it's just too crowded. This was yeah. going to be hacked um, as a lab at a security conference. And 2.4 is just too crowded. Yeah. Um, so this is this was the first one that we did, and this this is what started everything. Um, and then um, very very cool kit. This here, they this year they released their new version of the AMSAT CubeSat simulator. Uh, it's a little bit cleaner. Um, they tried to make it a lot more cost effective mm -hmm. by removing uh, some unessential components, um, such as there is not a battery charging cert IC or anything like that. Um, they're doing some things that does work, it, probably not ideal, but for an education purpose and stuff. It, but it's very much the same uh, kind of platform. Raspberry Pi Zero, um, onboard camera as well. Um, and in this case, they have, uh, they're using a different type of FM transmitter. They're actually using a walkie talkie module, mm. uh, which I thought was pretty, pretty ingenious. Um, and they do have an add on now that you can actually add command and control capabilities. You basically put an OTG cable into the Raspberry Pi Zero, um, and hook up a USB sound card. Um, so that they could actually be able to do it pretty, pretty ingenious, like the radio hackers and stuff. They're, they're yep. absolutely brilliant um, and stuff. So that's, that's that one. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where some of the, the, the concepts came from. This one here is, uh, is one that's produced by a company, uh, Edge Flight out of Wyoming. Um, very, very cool people. I've had a chance to, to actually go visit their offices and stuff. Um, this is probably the most cost effective solution at about 340 bucks or something. I've got a module that's out of place, but, um, as you can see, we've got, uh, three different boards here down at the bottom. We have our, uh, BMS or battery management system up here is our, our main, uh, com uh, onboard computer with a whole array of sensors. And then, um, up here, a, a whole bunch of other various sensors, uh, GPS altitude, um, Bear, um, air quality uh, sensors just it's it's absolutely packed especially for the price very easy to put together there's two versions of it there's the solderless and the non-solder um, and the difference really those is you actually have to put the the uh, female headers on everything else is it's got uh, pins and stuff but cost effective like I said about 350 bucks um, um, and it's a great way to, to play. This does Bluetooth um, as well as it has a custom um, ground station hardware uh, piece component too. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite one thus far here. Uh, this is <laughs> the closest to a flight worthy uh, CubeSat that I have. This one is produced by a company called Arctic Aero Astronautics uh, out of Finland. They're an actual aerospace company. Um, similar concepts, you can see, so we've got a downward facing uh, camera here, um, PCB based solar panels, um, and a few other things. This is the most, uh, what I consider realistic, um, CubeSat. So up here we have, 
Um, there's actually the RBF pins up here. Um, using these pins, you would actually almost be able to fully integrate without having to take that out. Also on off switch, hmm. a couple of LEDs, really, really cool. Uh, from that perspective, the on off is just so that an astronaut can go up there. Grab yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. You know, it's, it is a little bit expensive to hire a technician, get them flight certified <laughs> and fly them up there just to turn it off and on again. Um, but sometimes you have to do that. Uh, this one here is, I, this one's kind of a interesting one. If I can get it out, um, this one is produced by a company called My Sat Kit, out of Ukraine, um, and it's not func it's not fully functioning right now because I actually uh, broke it. But it's kind of claim to fame, and so uh, they have a 3D printed version um, instead of just this actual metal version. Um, if you're interested in this, the metal ver uh, the 3D printed is the way to go from a price perspective. But it actually has a little 9G servo in here that can actually deploy the solar panels. Hmm. Um, like I said, it's not exactly working right now, but I can probably, no, it's not even going to mechanically want to do it. Yeah, there we go. Um, well, one of them does, um, but it's cool. Um, yeah. A lot of off the shelf components. Um, so you'll find a lot of similarities from a component perspective and a lot of these. Um, and one, because it's hobby grade stuff, but it's also um, that cost benefit is what's actually flying in CubeSats in, in space as well. You yeah. see a lot of the same stuff. And then the last one is just the first successful working Tempest. Um, and so this is the this is the only one I actually care about in, in all of life. Um, <laughs> this one is actually cool. It's got a got an upgraded camera and stuff. Uh, this is where the AI camera is going to go because um, uh -huh. I've got some really uh -huh. interesting ideas uh, from that perspective. Um, but yeah, so this here is just really an amalgamation of of all bits and pieces of all of these um and what i thought was the most cost effective platform yeah you might have the uh, first real world application i've heard of that is useful for the ai yeah, camera so so well what's interesting is um i teach um air force and space force personnel as well and they have on orbit missions and stuff where they have specialized um uh, sensor packages and stuff like that using that ai camera i'm going to be able to simulate some of what they're doing in real life mm -hmm. um and so so things being able to detect specific objects um or anything like that i think is a really really cool application obviously from a from a space application not very realistic you'd have to have something much more com uh robust and stuff but the idea of having any kind of ai capabilities in a form factor like this to be able sipping to power sipping too. power yeah. because this is one of the challenges that we have is where do we do our data processing mm -hmm. do we do it on orbit or do we do it on the ground where we have to downlink all this data well having some kind of uh ai processing ability would be like we can take the picture we can process it throw the image away we don't need there's no sense in storing it on disk if we don't need it and then we only have to downlink you know if we detect something or depending on what our actual application is which means we were more cognizant of our link budget um which makes just a better application and so i when i saw that on on your video i was like <laughs> yep pre-order uh we're gonna do that because i just i think it's really cool the idea um of being able to to have that kind of capability we're already seeing ai on on satellites especially for things like anomaly detection um which is a, would a, a great use case mm -hmm. um for that um, but being able to have it built in into the image processing and because it's running a um, RP2040, it means, you know, we can go look and look under the hood, see what's going on and stuff. We might be able to replicate that in some other areas of the actual spacecraft for the purposes of like anomaly detection or something. So 